testing. One, two, testing. Diane, 1130 AM, December 31st. Today is the end of 2020. Every year feels like the worst ever, but we all agree that 2020 was a damn shitty year for everyone. It's like the Black Lodge all over again. This morning it took me over 15 minutes more than usual for meditation. Now I feel completely refreshed and struck again by the realization that all of us on this great big planet Earth live at only a fraction of our potential. At 10 a.m. I took my fifth coffee of the day. Damn good coffee. Then I met Lee Movie Geek who gave me his list of the 10 films he appreciates the most in 2020. Not only films of 2020 but all time movies he saw for the first time this year. I think it's in my pocket. Yep. I'm going to read it to you while I'm driving. We start with a Netflix film released in 2020, an American psychological thriller written and directed by Charlie Kaufman, I'm Thinking of Ending Things. I think of ending things. It's a complex story with visual clues and a claustrophobic atmosphere amplified by the 4x3 aspect ratio, as in a ghost story. Now we're going a few decades back. The Fifth Court, a giallo from 1971 directed by Luigi Bazzoni. It may not be a masterpiece, but it's an effective thriller, visually stunning, and greatly enhanced by an inventive score composed by Ennio Morricone. As you probably already know Diane during the first national lockdown in France, and despite its closure, the French Cinematheque launched the free VOD platform Henry, including restored rarities, curiosities, and early avant-garde short films with English subtitles, there is a link in the description of this video. The first movie was a restored version of the 1928 French silent film based on Edgar Allan Poe's gothic horror short story, The Fall of the House of Usher beautifully directed by John Epstein, and written by master surrealist Louise Bunuel. Next on the list, The Wicker Man. Not the 2006 American remake with Nicolas Cage. Not the bees! Ah! Oh, my eyes! My eyes! Ah! But the 1973 British folk horror movie directed by Robin Hardy, with Christopher Lee's incredible hairdo, and Britt Eklund singing like a mermaid. Please come, say how do. And dancing against the walls completely naked. I miss the 70s. 2020 was also marked by the death of Japanese film director Nobuhiko Obayashi, his 1986 biker film, His Motorbike, Her Island, is a formally audacious romance between magnificent losers of the post-adolescent population, shuffling as spectre ratios and flipping between monochrome and color. We're going back to France, this 1967 French war film directed by Costaga Ruz, Shock Troops, produced by Harry Saltzman, co-producer of the James Bond films. It's probably one of the best movie about the French resistance fighters, with Jean-Pierre Melville's Army of Shadows. It includes an amazing cast of French famous actors, two of them passed away in 2020. Amen. The editing and the action scenes, the aerial shots and the cinematography in general, are outstanding, especially for a movie made in the 60s. And we're back in 2020, with one of the best films of the year. The family psychodrama The Nest, by writer-director Sean Durkin, is the sort of movie that burrows in the mind. It sets in the 80s, in a dark British manner beautifully captured on camera, and offers terrific performances by all the cast, especially Carrie Coons. <laughs> Only in the theatre. Uh, uh. You're so full of shit. On March 31st, 1981 in Hollywood, Akira Kurosawa and Francois Truffaut were nominated for the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film, but they lost to Vladimir Menshov for Moscow Does Not Believe in Tears. 
This 1980 classic Soviet film is a very beautiful and touching story set in Moscow in the late 50s, and, in the late 70s, it tells the story of the lives and unfortunate loves of three independent Russian women. Now one of the finest westerns ever, Bend of the River, directed by Anthony Mann in 1952, is a classic Hollywood movie in a splendid technicolor, with a good story and believable characters haunted by secrets. When an apple's rotten, there's nothing you can do except throw it away or it'll spoil the whole barrel. Difference between apples and men. Diane, if you feel depressed, or you are looking for a remedy against anxiety, this movie won't be any help. <laughs> Threads, a 1984 British TV movie about nuclear war and its aftermath. The BBC aired it twice in the middle of the 80s. It had a huge impact and traumatized an entire British generation. The most difficult part to watch is not the blast sequence, but what's following. A realistic description of the nuclear winter where the survivors slowly perish from radiation. A nice way to conclude 2020. That's it, Diane. I hope that tomorrow will mark the beginning of a safe, healthy and prosperous year. But just in case it gets worse, I'll be in a place less weird than everything in 2020.